Hello everyone and welcome back to the Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and yep, yeah, we're gonna talk about the Empire because yep, yeah, I have been delayed with this video thanks to a bunch of leaks that were popping up. It's about time that we look towards the most popular faction in Warhammer, seeing as it's very likely that they'll still get more DLC as time progresses. Great Assembly know that the Empire will make money and to be honest, there's probably like two DLCs worth of content depending on how things go, maybe just one at a stretch, it very much depends. So let's talk about everything that's still missing. So we're gonna start off with the elephant in the room because it's really weird. I was expecting this in Thrones of Decay as like an FLC pack just to be like, oh my god, you know, look how good we are. Lords, all the lord options for the spellcasters. We finally have all the eight wins. It's kind of weird that we still don't have the Lord options. And before someone says, well, they'll be more popular, I very much doubt that a Spellcaster Lord would be much more popular than the current Engineer. The Master Engineer is incredibly overpowered. Uh, he hasn't been nerfed yet, as far as I recall. So, yeah, you have just a bit of options. The General is still awful. The Archer isn't too bad. The Arch Lector isn't great. But, yeah... The Master Engineer is currently the one to go for. Spellcaster Lords would be great for those who like Spellcaster-themed armies, which would have fit really well with Balthazar Geld, considering that we finally got the Gold Wizard Hero. The Celestial Hurricaneum is also missing, which is really odd, considering that this is the only truly unique unit missing. It's more of a mount option than anything, but you could have it there. It would be kind of cool to have, because it's essentially a buffer, it's got its own effects. And it's very unique. There is a mod, by the way, by Chaos Robbie, surprise, surprise, and it is absolutely awesome, but a lot of people don't use mods. This is the thing. When it comes to really unique things, especially where there is the perfect chance to introduce it, it should have been introduced. I mean, the Empire just had a engineer slash magic DLC, and this is a feat of engineering slash magic. I could see this being added in the future if they want to just do an FLC for funsies, or maybe if we get some sort of scraps DLC, which could actually end up working out. But even then, I don't imagine that a scraps format is going to be there until like the very end of the series, which may or may not be in a year and a half time, or could actually be extended as time progresses. Okay, so now we can start going into some other stuff which could be quite unique. We're missing Grandmasters and a hero version too, which essentially could be done in a way of a standard Knightly Order Chapter Master, and then they could have a few options to be able to upgrade, very similar to how you would devote a Chaos character to Korn, Sunesh, Nurgle, or Zinch. The idea here would be to have a bunch of melee-focused Lord options on cavalry with different types of cavalry, depending on how you upgrade it, so you could have a Knight's Panther Chapter Master or a Knight of the Raging Bull, there could be a lot of different options, I wouldn't imagine more than four, but if Creator Assembly want to go full ham, it would be kind of cool, with their different skins, different uses, and different abilities that they could use in battle, including some buffs. It would kind of make the general a bit more redundant, but the general could be upgraded to be kind of very similar to what happened to the Lord Magistrate, where it focuses up on being more of a buffer more than anything else. And let's be honest, most people aren't bringing a basic Empire General, like, at all, at all. As you may have noticed, it's a bit disjointed to my regular style of missing units and stuff, but that's because they fit the theme, because now that we've talked about the Chapter Masters, we're going to start talking about, well, Knightly Orders. There's a bunch of Knightly Orders in the game already. The Knights of the Raging Bull, I believe, are in the Elector Count troops, and then you've also got the Reichsguard, Knights of the Black Rose. There's still a bunch missing. The Knights of the White Wolf we'll talk about a little bit later, but yeah, you know, the Knights of the Sacred Scythe, the Knights of Moor, loads and loads of options, which could just have all these chapter houses littered across the Empire and throughout other locations, because you can find some in Bretonnia, you can find some in Talia and also Estalia, giving you reason to take those areas because then you'd get that sweet upkeep reduction. People want the Knight's Panther too, which is interesting actually, because functionally they'll be the same as other knightly orders. The only difference is different colouring, but a lot of people do want that, especially since we saw the same thing kind of happened with the Chaos Warriors, right? Chaos Warriors of Corn, Chaos Warriors of Sunesh, all that jazz. It's essentially the same troop. But let's be honest, the majority of you guys don't actually care of the units we've been talking about before. What you want to hear is about Middlelands, because everyone wants something to do with, you know, the Ulrichian forces. And I'm inclined to agree, you'd end up getting Boris Toddbringer finally as a proper playable legendary lord. You know, he doesn't have a star position just yet. He does, but you can't 
start as him, it doesn't have the unique faction mechanics, and it would be great to finally have one of the most popular characters in one fantasy as a proper start. Then you'd have the High Priest or Ulrich as possibly a legendary hero that would kind of work. You know, the Battle Priest of Ulrich to be able to support Boris Todbringer. It could also see him being implemented as a second lord, but... I don't know, maybe if you're playing as him, he's a lord, but if you play as Boris, then he's a legendary hero for Boris, in a very similar way to kind of what's happened right now with Vlad and Isabella. So that way you get two different campaigns, and I could see that working, in all honesty. More legendary characters in general is quite good, right? And with that, there's a bunch of units that could be added in, because there was a specialized roster here. This would be the, uh, well... Tutorian Guard, Hunting Hounds, Wolfkin, Warriors of Ulrich, Priests of Ulrich, Knights of the White Wolf, uh, the Seneschal of the White Wolf, Grand Master of the White Wolf. You could even have a proper like Warrior Priest, Lord, and Hero because there's a basic standard one there. But yeah, just flesh out the roster, add in the churches, add in just a bunch of flavor here. So when you're playing as Midlands, you're not really using units that keep screaming for Sigma for Sigma, it would just be immersion breaking, and I think something like this could work out quite well. Most of these would kind of just be reskins, but you'd get the Knights of the White Wolf, which would be, you know, Ulrichians mounted on horses, hitting very hard with great weapons, Chuchin Guard being on foot, very, very strong, Warriors of Ulrich kind of like swordsmen and so on, which is kind of expected, Wolfkin are a little bit different, because Wolfkin are kind of more marauderish, and then hunting hounds being dogs, which, to be fair, it's about time that dogs came into effect here, right? Come to think of it, considering how long this series has been going on for, it's kind of weird that we've had this series going on for so long, and the basic human factions like the Empire and Bretonia don't have their respective hound units. Then, when we look towards the warrior priest of Ulrich, or so maybe a lord and a hero version, They'd have their own abilities, kind of like the standard one, but more Ulrichian themed, so you'll be able to get some buffs and debuffs, some damage out there. Again, really part of the theme, which is really, really important. Now the thing is, we have to look towards characters now, because it's not just Boris and our Ulrich that's missing, there's a lot of Empire characters, pretty much all the Elector Counts, Kurt Helborg, Ludwig Schwarzhelm, a lot of really well-known characters that should be in-game by this point. It's actually weird that we haven't gotten anything like this, and, I mean, let's be honest, at this point, again, I have to echo the need for character pack DLCs. Because all the Elect accounts won't have their own specific DLCs. Ludwig Swarthelm and Kurt Helborg could be FLCs, uh, but even then, stuff has already been implemented like Fyodor Bruckner, which kinda fills that path. Volton is a big character too, and we don't know exactly if he's gonna come in or not, because... He's weird in that sense, right? Like, he's an End Times character, he's also a Storm of Chaos character, he's a big Mary Sue, but at the end of the day, he's really cool, people do like him. Where are all these characters, especially as we're going to some sort of weird hypothetical end of the series? This is why I said a few days ago that I think the series is nowhere near done, because, yeah, you know, it's a lot of stuff which is still not here yet. I look at the Lord Selection screen and I think... Well, yeah, this is awesome, but we're missing so much more. I look at the uh, rosters. The rosters are almost complete. Uh, characters add in a little bit of flavor here that sometimes don't need to be introduced with a full DLC. Again, character packs would work well. What if we had a DLC which introduced like five characters in a similar vein to Epidemius? Unique character, unique model, some unique mechanics, but nothing too out there because it doesn't have to be out there. But flesh out the map a little bit. Even though the map is feeling congested, it could always do with a unique model here and there rather than just generic man number four. And here's the part where you all start to switch off, but yes, they are part of the Empire and they will fight anyone who says otherwise. Halflings. Yes, they are a part of the Empire. They've got a half a vote. I know, weird. And yes, Creative Assembly have mentioned that they would like to bring in the hot pot sometime. It would be great if we saw a little bit more, you know, Kathleen the soup tank and so on. My hopes for them being a mini race pack, you know, one legendary lord, a little roster, also usable by the Empire, in the moot. Um, that's kind of gone. I'll be very honest with you. You never know if plans do change, but it would be nice to see some sort of mini race packs. However, if not, yeah, I mean, just halfling additions. A bunch of fun units for people to play around with to meme. 
people would eat that shit up. It wouldn't be like a large DLC, but I think for what eight pounds is the current thing for Lord Packs, Legendary Lord, or maybe his May as a legendary hero for the halflings then a bunch of halfling units and add in some empire characters in there that are missing right now like Kurt Helborg and stuff. They're done. I think it's important to get representation within the empire and the empire is so large it really needs to happen at least in my opinion. But with all that being said let me know what you guys think in the comments below as obviously you guys might think it doesn't work. Has there been anything I've missed? It's very likely considering that it's currently stupid o'clock in the morning and I'm going to be leaving soon on a trip in a few hours. But yeah, have a great day guys. Remember, I'm going to be in the UK until the 3rd. There's videos planned until then. There might be one or two days that just no content, but I think that's perfectly fine. I'll see you all again soon. Have a great day everyone. I'll put a post when I go to Warhammer World because yeah, I'm finally going to Warhammer World. <laughs>